Let's take a look at the interface. So in the center we've clearly got the graphics area where we can look at our geometry. Up the top here we've got some pull down menus, various ones. On the right hand side we've got some more menus and on the lower edge we've also got some other menus. So going back to the top edge here we've got these are just typical Microsoft style drop down menus in some cases multiple levels of those so if we go to one of those options it opens up a menu for example design points. You'll notice that against some of the functions like display and view layout there we've got a shortcut key so in this case control B so I can either access that via the menu or I can use, just use control B to open that menu so it's worth learning those as you go along there's, there's a handful of them around the system that you'll discover. If we go into Windows Preferences, we can actually set some options for the layout of the menus. So top left, we've got various ones, light gray, classic gray, dark gray. So we're going to stick with dark gray for the time being. I wouldn't recommend changing all of these, but you can do. That's um, entirely up to you. We've also got shaded background. I, particularly, I personally don't like that. I prefer just to have a plain color there. And you can choose whether you have a toolbar at the top. So you see this little toolbar that's appeared here. And you can also change the layout to be put the menus on the left or on the right. The right, right hand side is the conventional way of doing it. And that's, that's what I would be used to. But again, you can change that if you want to. In the middle here, we've got a zoom factor. So as I zoom in and out of the model, you can see that number changes and also up here we've got a reference to the mouse button so you've got mouse button 1, 2 and 3 left, middle, right and when I press for example Alt and Control you can see that that's with the left hand mouse button I'm rotating the model and that's an indication here of what that function is at the, at the present time so we've got rotations, translations, which is the middle mouse button. So I'm, I've got, in this particular case, I've got Alt and Control picked. And you can translate that across the screen or up and down the screen. And then the right hand mouse button is either rotating about Z. Z is an axis out, out of the screen. So I'm moving it left to right there. Or you can zoom in and out as well with the right hand mouse button. So at any one time those will tell you something about what the system is expecting from you. So it's worth knowing that that exists and worth looking up there if you're not sure what you're supposed to be doing next. Over on the right hand side we've got a miscellaneous set of functions here. So we've got for example display options. So these are global type functions at the top. Display options, reference manager which allows us to bring in geometry from other models just as background display light and display material and then below there we've got standard views on the left hand side and then we've got the equivalent work planes on the right hand side which we can't see at the moment we'd need to go into that in detail later we've also got the ability to put that in perspective mode or orthogonal view so it always looks a bit strange when you look at the exterior without perspective on, but often working without perspective on is the preferred way of doing things. And then we've got some zoom windows down here, so we can click on the square button there and we can just drag a window around an area that we're interested in and zoom in. And if you want to get out of that view, you want to go back to the previous view, you can press the function key F3 just takes you back to the previous view and it just toggles between the previous view and the current view so that's F3 if I'm zoomed in the other way you can come out of there is to use the auto zoom which is that one there so that just pulls us back so we can see the, all of the geometry and then we've got things like uh, display tessellation which controls the accuracy of the, the image in terms of the lines and the shading down on the bottom bar here, we've got a great big area of nothing, 
which just tells us that ISOM has been developed by Dassault. And then there's some what are called service functions here. So we've got ability to create work planes, for example. We've got view, navigation, display options. So that's controlling what things look like on the screen. We've got lists, which is the ISOM surf equivalent of layers. We've got sections, diagnostics, and the very important delete button, which allows us to delete things. So I can just pick an area and delete it. In the middle here we have the freeze and unfreeze button and what freeze does is essentially sets a restore point for the model so that before we do something drastic we could freeze it and then we can get back to that point in the future if we needed to. So for example if we delete something, so I'm going to delete this area, so I've picked it using delete and the left hand mouse button there. You notice up here it now says OK on the middle mouse button so when I press the middle mouse button that all disappears. It's now changed to undo so if I wanted to undo that step I can go back to where I was. Then it's gone to redo so I can toggle between those two states and that's the sum total of all the undo that you've got in ISOM. Supposing I deleted this, bear in mind we've set a restore point with the freeze button. Now I've deleted some more stuff so I'm using the middle mouse button again to OK that and then I think, oh, didn't mean to do those two steps, so I'm going to undo. But I can't get back to where I was originally, because I can only toggle between the undo state and the redo state. So I've lost that data. But we can go back to the freeze point by saying undo freeze. And that's taken us back to the point that we've originally froze the model. I would not recommend using these buttons at all. I would use file save as because freeze is not saving it to the disk whereas file save as is of course saving it to the disk so you're much safer off to, to use file save as than freeze you have been warned down here we have geometry functions so the actual functions themselves are in this area here and you'll notice that there's a lot of blanks in these areas the reason for that is that there's some controlling icons down here so if I just click through some of those you'll see that the the names the icons on the left change depending on what function I've picked so for example if I wanted to just deal with single surfaces in ISOM and a single surface is called a patch I would pick this top left menu which says create patch and then I can use some of these functions to create a patch or a single surface so on the top line we have things which are dealing with single objects and on the bottom line we've got functions which deal with multiple objects. So a surface in isomsurf actually refers to a group of patches. So on the bottom here we've got things which relate to groups of objects. The green icons there, the ones that are connected with that green circle there, on the left hand side we've got create and on the right hand side we've got modify. With the blue that's to do with curves, so on the left hand side we've got creating curve type options, on the right hand side modifying. And the same here with what's called raw data, is create on the left, create scan data, modify raw data and modify scan data on the right there. So these gr this group of icons here is all related to surfaces or individual surfaces which are called patches. These ones curve segments being the individual uh, curve elements or a group of curve segments which is called a curve. This one is a bit of an odd one out because you've got only raw data on the top and the raw data is like a string of discrete points and on the bottom we've got scan data, so to do with laser scanning, dense meshes of points. If we look in one of these menus, for example the fillet function here, there's some standard um, elements in this, in this menu that you'll see time and time again. So we've got a select button, so if we click on the select button it will guide us through the selections that we need to make. And then on the bottom right we've got an OK button. So not all menus are quite the same as this, but you'll find these features in a lot of different menus in ISOMSURF. And then we've got these sort of menus here, which is the individual 
um, objects that we want to, to pick so that will prompt us for picking a particular set of objects. You've got radio buttons so radio buttons toggle each other off so I can either have radius or cord I can't have both and you've got some more radio buttons here. You've also got some tick boxes so the tick boxes you can select those individually some of them here that actually switch other ones off as well but they're independent of each other to some extent you've got a drop down here so we've got different options design standard etc you have also got tabs along the top so not all menus have tabs of course but this one does have quite a few tabs on the bottom left corner we've got the cancel button that would just close the menu as will the cross at the top right We've got I for information, so that accesses the help resources. We can click on here and we'll restore all the values in here to what they were previously set to, or we can restore the window position. In some menus, such as display lights, you've got sliders. So you can either use the, the slider bar itself, or you can type in a value. So you'll see those features repeated around the system. Very bottom right, we've got the move menu here. So click on there and we've got a whole set of options here. Rotate, translate, scale, all the things that you can use for globally moving things around. You've got something called symmetry, which lets us set up our surfaces that go across the center line so that they are symmetric at the center line. And then you've got this thing called unified modeling. Unified modeling is a is a, almost a subsystem in itself, which we will cover later on in the course. Some users never use unified modeling, but it has some great features in there which are well worth learning.